In today's video, we are going to evaluate Hosel's study on mindfulness. And remember, this was an eight week course on mindfulness, also known as the MBSR intervention. And it was done in comparison to a waitlist control group. And when I say waitlist, it basically means that these participants were just as in need as those in the experiment. They had the same type of, type of qualifications. They just were not in the group. Remember that this study involved taking an MRI of the brain. And here we were measuring gray matter. And jumping to the conclusions, we did find that those that completed the eight week course increased their gray matter by 1% compared to that control group. And the amount of homework that they did outside of the eight week course didn't matter. It didn't influence the increase of gray matter. So something within the course, that's what did it. That's what helped increase the gray matter. So let's evaluate the study. Now, this was a longitudinal study. Now, there's good and bad out of longitudinal study. I'll just say the negative could be that we lose people to attrition. People might drop out, but it wasn't that long of a study. Um, what was really good about this longitudinal study is that in previous research, we had cross-sectional studies, which um, it's not the same group of people being studied. So here, we were able to like rule out participant variables, which was awesome we were able to allow time for the intervention to actually work and see the effects of brain plasticity in a measurable way. In addition, the control group, and this allowed us to see that the changes that we saw in our independent variable were not just due to simple time. So in this study, we have standardized equipment, which is, which is always a plus, okay? Uh, we used MRIs to measure our dependent variable. And when we have equipment that is standardized like this, we are able to get quantitative data. And this is going to allow us to carry out statistical analysis and compare, more specifically, compare things like before and after. Although the experience of the MRI is hardly ecologically valid. Like being in an MRI, it's, it's loud. It can be scary. It can, it can change someone's emotions. And this is not the same as like just sitting on your couch or being in normal real life. Remember, ecological validity has to do with your environment, your ecosystem. It's, it's nothing that you would experience on a daily basis. However, we can totally rule out demand characteristics because it's not gonna be possible for people to actually influence or change their gray matter within their brain by themselves. So they, they can't just give desirable answers. So this is automatically going to increase the validity, the internal validity. Using the MRI scanners is going to give us objective data. This means that our researchers are not going to have to interpret any data on their own, leaving out any researcher bias. Now, a big weakness is the fact that we don't actually have any correlations in this study. So we actually cannot pinpoint what is the cause or the relationship that is increasing the gray matter. Now, the study raised very few ethical issues. We had to make sure that our participants were clear of any physical harm, and this included having any metal implants or being claustrophobic. And we also followed our participants' right to withdraw because two people dropped out. Now, we do have to take into consideration the fact that our control group, they needed help. They applied for this eight week course two, they just kind of got put on hold. So we do have to account for the fact that they couldn't get help for eight weeks and maybe they needed it. It's not like we caused intentional psychological harm, but by lack of helping, it's very possible that it was increased or you know what I mean. So I hope this evaluation helped you out because you're gonna need to know how to do this. How to, we, we, do we need to even talk about generalization? Because the age range was pretty good. It was like 25 to 55, but these were like specific people. It's almost like a case study. So this may, you know, only work with people that have high levels of stress and anxiety. We would definitely have to change our population in order to see if it was generalizable to a wider range of people. I hope you enjoyed this evaluation. Check down below for a playlist of other evaluations of the 990 syllabus for the AS level. Don't forget to join me on Patreon, especially if you're in the A level. I have a lot of content there. I'll be seeing you.